that which is critical in understanding the true value of pi, which we have established as 3.144, is an understanding of something called the mystical squaring of the circle. In olden days, it was called the mystical quadrature because what we're interested in is drawing a square. So we'll call it the unit square, which is one by one. So, so I'm going to give that a value or call that distance of the square called the unit square is one. And we know that the perimeter of that square must be four because we're going to talk about this later on. So we know that the perimeter of this square is four. So in ancient times, they had two types of squaring of the circle. One was based on the square area. We could look at the square area. But what we're concerned with today is actually the perimeters of the square and the circumference of the circle. And that's got another name as distinguished from the squaring of the circle. We're calling it the rectification of the circle. So when we say rectification, we're talking about making equal perimeters. So I'm going to draw in this circle now. So, so this has an interesting mathematics to it. I just notice that this circle comes in on the corners, not just like that. So that's equal perimeter of a square is equal to the circumference. So that means if this square is one by one by one by one, that's four, that string is four meters long if that's one meter. So if I picked up this string of four meters and I said, what's the corresponding circle that is also four meters? Well, this is the answer. And we want to know what the radius is or the diameter of that. It's more than one. We know that from we know that from here to there is one. Oh no, from the square to there is one, but we don't know that whole distance. So let's give them values. We'll call it A, B, C, D is the square. A, B, C, D is the square. But the circle that protrudes, we're gonna call that G, H, and the points on the square here, A, B, C, D, we'll call this E, F, and the center is also called the origin. So that's called the origin. Um, so now we've got our grid. We, we, we know that it's the unit square. We're gonna, today's lesson is we wanna calculate, we wanna know the distance of the diameter of that big circle now. To, 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 in a general way to how to square a circle is let's say we have a square Okay, we might just use the white here. So I'm going to draw a square. And this square is, that's the A, B, C, D that we showed before. So A, B, C, D. I'm going to cut it in half. So we've bisected the square. We do another half because half of a half is a quarter. But a half of a quarter is an eighth. So by just taking all these midpoints like that, we've created a grid an eight by eight grid that has 64 mini squares or little cells, 88. So, so that's an eight by eight grid. So visualize that we pick this up and put it there. So A, B, C, D is really 64 little cells. The relationship to square the circle is that when, when the circle is equal in perimeter to the square, there's actually another square going around this there's another square going around it and that square happens to be nine by nine so the ratio the ratio of eight to ninth or eight ninths is the key the geometric key that unlocks the mystery of the squaring of the circle is having a square that's an eight by eight like your chessboard and the circle will touch the nine by nine and that ratio eight to nine is of deep significance high significance in all mathematical inquiry okay so we're halfway there um so we need to do a little bit of calculation and because i've only got this um short segment in 10 minutes what i'd like to show you is that if i wanted to know the radius of this i can do some mathematics to calculate the distance from g i wrote it in pink so to go from g to h 
we know that g to h must be more than one it's greater than one that symbol is called greater than and and after a little bit of calculation which we, we don't have the time to do now it's established that the diameter of this larger circle now is um let's write this down so oh, so we'll say that ef the square ef to there which is in the square equals one unit but g h the the extrapolated length of the square is a bit more than one and it's called 1.272 and 1.272 is called the square root of the golden ratio and what this means is what number multiplied by itself will give us 1.618033988 it goes on so that's called phi but we're interested in the square root of phi. So the distance from there to there, that which makes the bells ring, that which makes this like a highly tuned instrument of the highest order, that which makes heaven and earth equal because the square represents the earth plane and the circle is the spirit, the, the divine. So by making them equal, when we rectify the circle, equal perimeters, the key is the, the new diameter, which is 1.272, and it's got a name, and um, this is my name for it that um, everyone's using now. I love this name. It's called the golden root. Just like you have a golden rectangle, golden triangle, I'm defining this diameter as the golden root 1.272, uh, which, as we discussed previously, is the vertical height of the pyramid in Giza. The vertical height in relation to half its base, one unit. Okay, so we just explained that the we rectified the circle. We made the perimeter of this the we made the perimeter of the square equal to the circle. So what's the perimeter of the square? It's one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter whether it's one unit, one meter one mile so now we know that four is equal to the perimeter of the circle which we call the circumference so the the perimeter of any circle has a formula called pi times the diameter we don't know what pi is we've assumed pi for two and a half thousand years as an approximation to 3.141 that's the thing we thought pi is approximation is 3.141. They always, Archimedes even said that's an approximation. Now we're going to fine tune this um, this musical instrument, this geometrical masterpiece. So we're, we're equating the 4 equals pi times d. That's the circumference. C equals pi d. But we know the diameter, gh. We know that gh is the, is the golden root of root 5. So our equation becomes 4 equals pi times the square root of phi. But we want to know what pi is. This whole inquiry, what is the true value of pi? We want to establish that pi equals something. So because we have over here, we have here 4, the perimeter of the square equals pi times root phi. phi. If I divide um, both sides by 4, what? I, I, I've got pi here, so I'm going to put pi here, and to get pi on its own, I have to divide this side and that side by the golden root. So the answer is pi equals 4 divided by the square root of phi. So if you divided 4 by 1.272, we get this amazing, timeless, ancient value called 3.144, which contains the harmonics of the speed of light, 144. This is such a brilliant and simple um, revelation that I feel it really needs to be taught and actually taught to children at the high school level. This is uh, a connection between heaven and earth where we, we find that everything has its um, perfect proportion.